Hello and welcome everybody, girls and guys. My name is Aram and this video came from Oregon State University. Ryan sent this video to me and asked, hey, can I get some feedback? And of course, I'm very happy to help. Super polite guy. And uh, of course, I do everything I can to help you. So a bit of a different setup. Before I sit, sit down on my desk and um, go through all the details in an intellectual way, what I want to do today is just hop on a buy road. This is a, a new Club Series prototype. We don't have a pro up here. I could show you sweet rowing in a pro. I'm going to go through one by one. First of all, let me explain what it is that I personally think makes an eight go fast. I'm, I'm going to row feet out here, so I'm not going to use a lot of upper body. But for me, the most important principle is to use body weight at any given time. Passively for the first part of the drive, actively for the second part of the drive. The question is how do you do this, especially in an eight? For me, the most important thing is that you actually do start with a drive where the upper body stays in position. Now, if you want the upper body to stay in position, there is one thing to pay attention to, and that has a, that has a lot to do with your pelvic stability. So if you cannot really hold the pelvis, um, but it becomes round, what you do is you use only half of the trunk because in order to make the upper body weight count, you're gonna make that lever long. This is what we learn in physics. A long lever will move a lot of mass. If you wanna move a lot of mass, that's what you're gonna do. It doesn't mean you should sit there straight, can I breathe anymore? That's not what we want. What we want is a, a nice long hang, and then we're gonna use a tiny bit of motion that originates in the low trunk. Now, here the problem is, let's go through um, one by one. If we look at stroke seat, stroke guy, what you do is you use essentially use the upper body right in from the catch. So you do that one. And the problem about this is that you actually, um, there's no real drive face. So your force curve looks dramatically different than everybody else's. Um, if it, you should get into a nicer hang, and I think you should work on your mobility. So you need to work on exactly that mobility point where you can be at the catch and actually hold the upper body without doing this right from the catch. And the way you do it is right at the catch, you see this? All right, the catch, oh, trying to roll my pelvis. So if you want to pivot around the hip, you got to control the pelvis. That controls the rest of the trunk. I think I have a, my idea why you do this is that on linear ergs, there's so much load on the back that an early upper body reduces a lot of the load. I assume your force curve is good up to here, high, right before perpendicular. This is where the oars, that would be perpendicular. This is just before the oars overlap. Whoop, here there's a decline of force. And that is not good if you're stroke seating the eight. I think you've got an excellent feeling for rhythm and all that other stuff is great, but that one part could make you faster. Okay, let's talk about seven seat. Um, about seven seat, the issue is in seven seat, your job is to transfer the rhythm of the stroke guy. Um, and what you do is you bounce out your hands at the finish. So it's, you go, boom, it's, you almost, it, it's not true, but it, to me it appears that you almost spend more energy to get the blade, to get the hands away from the body than you spend to get them close to the body. And that's the number one thing. If you see that your stroke guy has a nice pause here, and this is what the stroke guy does extremely well, um, you really don't want to bring your hands out too quickly because the issue now is that the entire timing for the for the eight is off. The because six C does exactly the same thing. Five C does the same thing. The first the first guy who actually has some brings some collectedness and calmness into that boat is four C. Three C is too explosive again. Two C is calm. And both seed is kind of explosive with the hands out as well. So this is something you got to synchronize across the entire aid. It looks great, but if you look closer, that is a big issue. The thing is, if you move your hands out rapidly, so you do this. What do you do? You round your shoulders. Do we want to round our shoulders? No, no. Let me put the camera in a different angle. So, oh, much better. Okay. Now, if you if you are to finish and you bring your hands out rapidly, what you do is ugh, you become round here and you don't want to be round here. What you want to do is hold and then move from the pelvis 
in, rotate from the pelvis the entire time forward. If that's not the case, you'll always be round. Your low trunk will not be stable. And I think that's what we see here. Yeah. Ah, now I also get something else. Okay, you guys are trying to bring up the rate. Ah, haha. <laughs> okay, no, you don't bring up the rate with the fast hands away. No, because if your hands go away too quickly, what happens is that you kind of forget about the last part of the drive. You forget about the tension you need here. That finish is all about tension in the upper abs and then low back. Ooh. So, but if you already focus on, coach said fast hands away, it makes me faster, maybe coach didn't say, then you go like, and that's, the more tired you become, the more this will be an issue. Right now, when you fit and you know the camera is there, that works. But trust me, 1,000 meters into a 2K, your lactate is somewhere over the peak, and, and you just wanna, it's gonna be that. So you create the patterns for when you're tired, when you're fit and well, and, and that's, that's an issue. Across the entire aid, I recommend to do in low steady state, a mid steady state, a light pause, none of that is gonna be lift and raise pace, but what is going to be lift is tension. So it's gonna be, hop. That creates the tension we need. Okay, I will, I will talk about you guys in, in more details when I'm on my desk. Now, um, oh yeah, sixty. What do you do? Oh, you hide this very well. You actually start with your upper body. <laughs> you start with your upper body, but it's almost not visible. It looks like it looks like this, a solid leg drive. But if you look closely, it isn't. It is just before the leg, just before the leg drive starts. You do this. See this? You become round instead of being stable. You become just before the drive starts. Back. If you wonder what that noise is, this is pop prototype of the next generation. We want to bring out 2023 or late 2022 because we're almost sold out with the current batch of clubs. We just upgraded a bunch of parts. And for example, the seat, he makes funny noise. Usually by where we still do that, but here that doesn't fit 100%, but it's our, it's our prototype where we want to test a bunch of things and see how they work. The new transmission, everything's pretty much different. This is why it doesn't have any covers, but I like the way it rolls. My team just put it together today and I'm very happy about this. Brought it up to about a thousand watts, 980 to be precise. This is what I did in this thing. And yeah, it holds up pretty nicely. But again, uh, even though Byro, you know my attitude, I want to ship out something that's 100% done. Let's get back to the topic here. That is very important. Number 60, just before you start to drive, you do the pelvic rotation, not for the recovery. You do it for the catch. Because when that energy starts to flow through the body, this is when you need full control here. Okay? And that is, you need to hold that for the entire drive. Not go to the catch, loosen up, then start to the drive. This is gonna hurt your low back. You don't wanna do this. Okay, anything I should talk about here, up here? Five seed, no. Early upper body, five seed. No solitary leg drive, but I've already talked about this principal issue before. Four seed, I love the way you do the drive. That is awesome. Great. Three seed, no, that's good. Maybe relax your inside shoulder, that's two. Relax here. Two seat, awesome. Like that. <laughs> really good. I wonder if you guys have steering problems. Because you got two really smooth up plates on poor side bow, then that's gonna bring the boat out of out of center. Oh, bow, bow man. Hey, hey buddy, what, what you need to do is at the catch. Oh, don't shoot the slides. Your seat moves out and then you connect. So it's you start, you, you were probably taught hard leg drive in the catch, work hard. Ugh. Now, if you forget about the rest of the trunk, this is what happens. And you brutalize your back. 
So don't do that. At the catch, you take all the time in the world to connect. But it's, it's not about a quick catch here, because the blade points away from the board anyway. It's about connecting and building perpendicular. Okay. I mean, this is a great boat, but there are a couple of things which change. Okay, there's a bunch of wood at the workshop right now. Remodeling quite a bit. Can you see this red, red stuff? A couple of covers for um, throws and throws coming out. That's a couple of throws ready to ship out. See, we make this crate so massive. Yeah, but even a couple of forwarding companies managed to thrash a couple of crates. Crazy. Welcome back. Let's talk about the details here. So, stroke seat. The issue is that you, you stroke this boat with a force curve that is different to some of, some of the other guys in the boat. It, the issue is, see this here? The way you start to drive is with an immediate upper body rotation that goes through the entire drive. So right now, you already are in a lean back position with the leg drive in full swing. Boom, right there. And that's also the reason for the washout. There's nothing you can do about this washout here. So if, if coach tells you less washout, the reason for that happens at the recovery. By the way, elbows should be out a little more at the finish. Get it up a little. Now, see this? You only move half the trunk forward. Right here where my cursor is, you, should, you don't rotate around the hip. That's the issue. So the rotation happens half the trunk, but not full the trunk. And the, that's, that's the prime problem. This is something you can change right now. And um, I linked that. There's a mobility video where I showed a couple of basic mobilization exercises with Jakob uh, a couple of years back already. Uh, tr um, try to do this. Um, something else that helps is gentle good mornings you, you just need a i don't know 20 pound bar 10 kilo bar um maybe a, tw a 20 kilo bar 40 pound bar and try a few good mornings and make sure your back super straight not to make your muscles tired but just to learn to connect or you can even start out doing doing a drill where you just try to have a super straight back let me show you what i mean first of all you you rotate and then you go down and then you want to have a straight back. So be parallel to the floor and have a straight back. Now, is that possible? It's good. Then you actually have the physical capability to do that. Then the next thing you need to do right here, activate the quadriceps a little longer. These bits right here, they should be engaged much longer. If they're not engaged, you have too little control under the boat. I, I didn't show you that in a bi rower, but if you rotate with your pelvis, while your quads are engaged at the finish, you actually start to move the boat towards the bow. That's super effective. If everybody in the boat did that, boom, three seconds faster than 2K. It, it's these tiny changes. There are a couple of miraculous things that work super well. The problem is that everybody focuses on hard leg drive and a quick hands away, and that's counterproductive. You've got the, the RS coming up, so there's not much you can do right now, except for practice five sets of five good mornings, not a lot of weight, just for mobility. Don't even use a bar, use a broomstick. It, it's just as a warm up. try to mobilize that, okay? You cannot change a lot about your technique right now, and I wouldn't do that. Um, the way you row is probably fast, and it's all well, it all well works out right now. But if there's something that you can do that improves, that helps you to improve rapidly, it is the way you do the release. Let's go back a couple of frames. Back. More tension, low abs, upper abs, low back. <laughs> You know, not the chest, because the chest will bring your shoulders back. You don't want that. But it's low, it's here, upper abs, you see this? And you can have a bit of, to me, it always feels like <laughs> trying to assume the attitude of a super arrogant rower. I've been rowing for 40 years, you know. I've been to 25 Olympics, 30 Olympic gold medals. There's nothing you can tell me. Too strong, too tall for this world. That's complete nonsense. But it gives you kind of the attitude that everything is slow. You've got everything under control. You don't need to move rapidly. Number seven, say, true for you as well. Okay? 
don't don't try to solve every issue with quick emotions okay so quadriceps here keep them engaged until there's a bit of rock over done in the with the entire trunk not just half the trunk make sure you don't go over the top of your shoulders when you go forward go low i use that serve on a tray analogy here you are welcome how, how do you engage your muscles now it's low versus let me grab you or how can i serve you that activates the lat that goes over the top of your shoulders that activates the lat you feel a bit of stretching right there that changes everything seven seat with seven seat the problem is your hands away boom it's too explosive hold the tension follow your stroke guy you have to you, number seven c your main job is to transfer what the stroke guy does to the rest of the boat because the rest of the boat will follow you, you know, some of them will follow the stroke some of them will follow you your job is to transfer what the what the stroke guy does with power and accelerate or amplify the stroke guys work copy and amplify don't do more of that but make sure you copy so well you match so well in its influence on the boat that you that the rest of the boat is convinced that there is no other way that it's not there's nothing there's nothing intellectual this is something that either works or doesn't you know that that's communication without words if if you two in in in, in stern pair if you work together so well that there is no doubt that this is the way to go everybody will follow you but at the moment you don't so don't do your own thing here you're not in stroke seat you're in seven seat you're the amplifier okay pause a little look where your hands are look where your stroke guy's hands are pause here then rock over is nice i think you use the entire trunk in a very nice way that is great and when you go forward don't push down into the boat again serve the tray analogy your blades should be off the water that is excellent that's a very good role model here but the problem is that the outside shoulder is lower than your inside shoulder there you go don't try to get the, the last the last centimeter of reach doesn't pay reach is great you need length but it doesn't pay to be extra long because your blades now at the catch it will take too long to connect and in order to avoid this what you do is start with your legs and open the upper body right away that's a fraction too early be more patient everybody in the boat gener in, in general this entire eight be more patient place the blades first then start to the drive of course i know this is utopias you cannot place the blades and wait until everybody's ready the boat's too quick for that but what you need to do is at the catch everybody make sure you can do a drill in pairs and fours go to the catch place your blade let go of the oar just let go you shouldn't need the oar to stabilize your body there's no better boat to practice this than a quad or an eight regular finish position what i'm going to row starboard okay down up place the blade so finish position forward place the blade take your fingers off take your hands off remain in catch position you should not require your oars to stabilize you that also includes that you cannot force yourself to the last centimeter because everybody wants to have a long reach the thing is guys you have to re you have to repeat this entire cycle up to 40 times a minute that is a full stroke cycle every 1.2 1.3 seconds how do you want to do that you have it has to be effortless this is what the great uh, the great crews do everything that is forced within a strike a stroke cycle explosive hands away um extreme hard leg drive at the catch training have an extra long reach that is inefficient you cannot consistently repeat this for an entire race there will be a trade-off and consistency especially in sweep rowing oh that's key absolutely so try to polish the edges of that that's a drill i just recommend you can do um in the day before the championships maybe it was too negative about you and stroke seat but i didn't mean that but i really want to help you guys to get 
get the extra, get the extra edge. Okay, six each. Same issue. You see, I, I talked about this. Slight ra rising of, a slight raising of the upper body, an early pivot, then stabilizing. No, 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 no. It's actually not. You use the upper body for most of the drive. And the problem is that you're not really using your upper body fully. You kind of cut it off in order to keep the timing. That's one of the big issues. Blade timing. When, when you start to synchronize an eight, what you want to do is work on blade timing so that it all looks the same. Visual appearance, synchronized visual appearance. That is great and awesome. However, um, people will, and that's for your coaches out there, important. People will start to do funky things just to stay in, in within the timing. They will cut the upper body swing short yeah, because timing is timing. The blades are a visible factor. You cannot neglect that. So of course they will, I, they could swing more. It would give more acceleration, but we kind of overlook that because we think if the blade work is synchronized, the wrist is going to be good as well. No, that, that can be not in a negative sense, but that's actually cheating. Some athletes have to cheat in order to get the timing right because they don't know what is the next step to be in the same, to have the same force curve or to have the same rowing hand riding the same influence force curve influence on the boat now with six seed what you do is the problem here at the catch uh, at, at recovery same thing everybody cross the entire boat you don't keep your quads engaged long enough so right there that's an issue there's not enough control over the boat when you rock over you consistently lean forward more and more and more it is so well hidden but the problem is that stroke seat, your timing is so off because you use your upper body so early so that your effective stroke is pretty short. And that's why six seat has to adapt and cut the upper body short as well. Stroke seat, if you, if you focus on your recovery, get that cleaner, rock over right from the, with the pelvis, hinge around the hip, that issue will be solved. A bit of an issue with the shoulders left and right. Your inside shoulder is too stiff and you're leaning forward too much. Inside shoulder a little looser. What am wrong here? Starboard. Inside shoulder a little looser. A bit more rotation in the shoulder girdle. Don't try to get the extra centimeter. It doesn't pay. Because what do you do here if the outside shoulder is deeper than the inside shoulder, what is the case right now? The moment you start to drive, you have to pivot around the hip. And that is the same issue again. Um, if everybody pivoted around the hip, that actually wouldn't be such a big deal. Overall, it would be less effective, but it wouldn't be a big deal. The issue is that some of you actually are effective and they probably feel a lot of load at the catch. Okay, let me check five seed once more. Recovery, same right there. Re oh. Okay, recovery. Yeah, quarter zips are not activated long enough. Not enough connection to the foot stretchers. Inside shoulder a bit too stiff. That's so, uh, looks like you're rolling the wrong side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You try to reach forward, not out. Rotate more around the, rotate more around the pin. That's some basic stuff. And at the catch, that drill with looseness and, and trying to place the blades that go of your oar handles and stop at the catch and wait what happens. You do this in a standstill, of course. That will teach you a good, a good deal about how to position the body because you can't hold your body without it works that way. And you should be able to let go to, to let go anytime. And that's also why you pivot that early to get the blades into the water. And that's the reason why you have a washout at the finish. Okay, four seat. What you do very well, I can see this from here, is you're, you're pivoting around the hip. You actually hinge from the hip. You use the entire upper, upper body as one lever. Um, same issue with the quads, not enough tension here. It, you shouldn't cramp and tighten but just have a slight bit of tonus and hold it until you're hinged over that is great of course you have very long arms i think you're, you're a tall athlete so your perception is i don't have to lean forward a lot and that gives you the freedom to relax now if you're if you're smaller and i'm personally on a smaller side and 176 in centimeters that is not tall but i was still able to keep up with the others in terms of stroke length because it's a matter of A, flexibility, move around the hip, and B, it's a lot about going with the oar. Don't try to go forward. 
I was always taught, you need more reach, you need more reach. When I sat on the by rower, I actually saw in degrees in length that I was longer than some of the others. So I understood, okay, you, you don't have to do, you don't have to do this. You can focus more on your force curves, that pays more. So everybody else in the boat who's, who happens to be a bit smaller, try to, try, try to focus on your hip mobility. Move from the pelvis. That's what I admire about force aid. If you, you appear to be on the taller side here, that is exactly what we need. Not being tall, but being relaxed. That makes a big difference. Here at the catch, you rotate right around. Yeah, you rotate right around. Yeah, interesting. But when I looked at your rowing before, my impression was that you were actually able to hold your upper body in place. Let's look at it once more. No, same thing. No, we take that back. You rotate right with with the catch mm -hmm. very interesting my overall impression is that everybody's trying to match timing of stroke seat that timing is because of the early hinge around the hip too short and therefore some people cannot use their full potential i don't think that you should switch seats or move seats that's way too late and your time, you, your general attitude as a, as a team and, and the way you move as a boat is great. I think everybody has his own, in German we say construction sites, but that's a Germanism. So things to work on. And if you all work on these, I think just a little bit, that would give you much more speed. Okay, let's look at three seat. Might be a bit of an inside outside shoulder issue. Not too sure. It appears that you have a solid leg drive here. And you cut the upper body short. Okay, so you probably feel a lot of load at the catch. But I like the way you approach the water. You hold the upper body. You pivot early, but not too early. You look like you used to pivot later than that, and you adapt it. And you cut the upper body short at the finish. <laughs> it's so interesting to read that handwriting. Okay. Yeah, three seat, I think that's fine. Bit of inside outside shoulder control. Pivot a little later than that, but I'd go with the boat. There will be some adaption probably. Okay, two seat. Ooh, ooh. Ooh, very nice. Wow, that is excellent. Great. Nice drive, nice hang, long drive. Great. Hey, I love your technique. Looks good. From that angle, I'm very happy. Wow. Hey, that is awesome. Let me check again. Yeah, that is good. I, th I think if you rode in a single, you probably could use your upper body a little longer before your arms engage. So there's a timing issue. That's a bit too early. But for in, within this aid, that's the best you can do. Um, absolutely great job. Nope. No more friend. That's very good. Very happy. Bow seat. Yeah, that's the one thing I mentioned. Make sure you don't move out your seat before your blades, before your blade is engaged. I know you can't. See, I can't see your blade, but I can see your tension, muscle tension across the body, and it is obvious that you move your seat before your blades are in the water. See this right there. So that's a timing issue you've got right there. Rest is actually pretty good. There's a bit of an extra forward lean just before the catch. Whoop. Maybe leave that and control the seat control the seat a bit more during the recovery make sure you can actually slowly engage you don't have to pu push so hard with your legs don't do that at, especially not at the beginning connect first and drive your job is stability so you have to you have to make sure that your blade is in the water in a very stable and calm way it shouldn't smack the water and i think it does it quite a bit now that's that's the race pace and this is where one of the issues the overall underlying issue about that aid starts to show 
the issue is that some of you tried to get the timing right, but there is not enough hang in there. So drive, keep the upper body in position, pivot, use your upper body weight. Um, that's the fundamental principle of rowing. And if we only focus on blade work and timing and synchronicity, we forget about the most important principle of them all. And that's what I see here across the team. Not everybody connects at the catch, hangs, propelled with the drive and hinges around the hip. And I think if you all focus on that and try to get this right together, that would be the most important thing. Stroke guy, pivot later. You got to get this under control. That, if, if you can do this, that would help the entire boat. But it's not only your task to improve that. Everybody else has to do his share as well. You all have to do this. Overall speaking, this is, is a very good looking boat, a boat that is super well synchronized. I like the spirit, I like the work you do. I can feel the power, I can sense the power that is within that boat. So that is great. And I think you guys have achieved a lot already. Just to row like this is a great feeling. It is a very good feeling. My job is not to soothe you and say, you try so hard, I know, I appreciate. You, you get a medal for trying hard. Hmm? Uh, no, life works differently. My aim is to get people to the next step. How can you be faster? How is that possible? And there are a couple of things that need to be done. Uh, some of my athletes say, hey, you, you always find something else where I can improve. That's my job. If you want to be the best you can possibly be, there are a lot of things to address. And this is why I was pretty pretty sharp with the things I talked about. Um, some people may disagree, that's absolutely legit. Um, I don't, my intent is not to be negative, my intent is to be constructive. There are a couple of things you can change before the RAs and there are a couple of things you can change afterwards if that crew stays together. All right, good. If you want to work with me, rmtraining.com is the website. Join the discussion on rowing.zone, that's a rowing enthusiast platform that I'm building up at the moment, about 800 to 1000 subscribers. Already registered, it's becoming something big for the Rome community by the Rome community. This is now a very good time to hit the subscribe button and it's an even better time to hit the share and like button. I wish you a very good day. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you got something out of it. If you did, leave a comment. Let me know what you think and I wish you all the best. I see you in the next video. Bye bye.